So the center of mass of an object or a system of objects is the point that moves as if all of the mass were concentrated there and all of the external forces were applied there. So it's really the point we've been studying all year. Other points of the object would move relative to the center of mass. For symmetrical objects that have uniform density, meaning the density doesn't change as you go to different places in it, it's going to be the geometric center of the object. So if you had a rectangle, it's going to be the middle of the rectangle. Circle, center of the circle, uh, rod, middle of the rod. So it's not usually a problem to find the center of mass. Uh, we'll learn how to do it for um, non-symmetrical arrangements in a little bit. So the center of mass would be right here in the center. You may have also heard of something called the center of gravity. And so that's the point where the weight uh, of the objects, you would have the same amount above and below the points. And so if I were to uh, draw a line here, uh, if the weight above was the same as the weight below, that would also be the center of gravity. And for all practical purposes, that is the case. The center of gravity is in the same place, and that's how it's going to be for our class. But just so you know, it's possible to have the center of gravity be a different place. If you account for the force of gravity weakening with altitude, the center of gravity would be slightly below. And so it would lower a little bit below the center of mass because gravity is stronger closer to the Earth and weaker away from the Earth. Um, and so normally we ignore that because ignore that it's very, very tiny. Uh, this is exaggerated. Even if you account for this with a huge building, it'd be slightly under. Uh, this does come into play with satellites. Um, they can exhibit weird behavior if you don't uh, know where the center of mass and center of gravity are and make sure that your design accounts for that. And so you'll need to be able to find the center of mass of a system of two objects. That's the most normal sort of thing they'll ask you to do. And so I have mass M1 and M2 separated by some distance X2. And I want to find the center of mass of this system. That would also be where they balance. And so we pretend, you don't have to put them on a seesaw, but we pretend they're on a seesaw and we want to find where to put the fulcrum so that they're balanced. And so how far from the center of M1 would I place it? Or you could also work this one out for how far from M2. And so we draw a free body diagram. We have the weight of M1, the weight of M2. I'm assuming M2 is bigger here. It's drawn bigger. There also would be a normal force uh, at the fulcrum, but we are going to sum the torques about the fulcrum. I think I have it going the other way, counterclockwise positive, right? Um, let's fix that. And so counterclockwise positive, so I don't really care about the normal force. So the sum of the torques about this point are zero. And so I have a torque from the weight of M1. And again, we're just pretending they're playing seesaw. Uh, they don't really even have to have gravity for this to work, but we'll play along with that. And so it's the force times the lever arm is torque. So the force is the weight. The lever arm is our unknown X center of mass. And then I have a negative torque from M2. And it's the force times the lever arm. But the lever arm, instead of a number, is the total separation minus the center of mass. And so this is the lever arm, and you can see that's x2 minus x center of mass. And those have to add up to zero. You can say this equals this, but I don't recommend that. And so carry out the multiplication uh, and cancel out the g, divide out by g. And notice I end up with a plus here. Minus m2 times minus x center of mass gives me a plus. And so the rest is just algebra here. Um, get all your x center of mass terms on one side. Factor it out and solve for it. You'd probably do this in less steps. Uh, this is not really an equation to memorize. You want to be able to come up with this on your own. If I just give you two masses and I say find the center of mass, you create the seesaw, you try and balance it, you try and figure out uh, what we're asking for. In this problem, if we made up some numbers here, let's say M1 is 2 kilograms, M2 is 4 kilograms, so we know the center of mass would be closer to M2. If you go through and solve, you should find out uh, x2 is, um, well, that's not, uh, an x2 is 3 meters, that the final answer should be closer to m2. And so this will be 2 meters 
and so this would be one meter. So you should be able to figure out either of those, uh, depending on what the problem asks. Well, what if we have more than two things? And so let's go through this again, but a little differently. I'm going to move the origin back off M1 sum. And we'll see why that is later. And so I'm going to derive the equation that you need to know and use. You don't really have to know how to derive this, but it would be a good exercise if, if you could do it or at least follow along. And so now x2 is measured from m2 all the way to the origin. And x1, which was 0 before, is the distance from the origin to m1. And we're still trying to figure out x center of mass relative to this origin rather than relative to the center of m1. And so again, we pretend like they're playing on a seesaw. And we have forces. And we're going to sum the torques about the fulcrum. So I don't really care about the normal force. And the sum of the torques would be zero if they're balanced. The center mass is where they would balance. And what's different now is the lever arm for M1 is this distance. And you can see that's X center of mass minus X1. And then this is the same as what we saw before. This would be this lever arm. And so it's X2 minus X center of mass. And G divides out. And the rest is just some algebra, but be careful here. I have a minus m2 times negative x center of mass, so I get a positive here. And uh, factor out x center of mass and arrange your terms, and you get this equation, which if you go back to the previous one, before x1 was 0 on the previous slide. So if I put in 0 here, I get the same relationship we had before. But this one references a different origin. And so my question is, what if we had three masses? What would this equation come out to be? We could add a third mass over here and go through this whole thing again. But I think we can see we would come out with another term here, right? And another term here. And it would look like this. And so what if there are four masses? Well, I think you get the idea. So there's a way to write this differently in math. Uh, for n objects. So we want to be able to write the equation for any number of objects. Usually they give you three, sometimes four. Uh, be prepared to do four, but I, I'm only going to ask you to do three. And so for n masses, we'd write this a little differently. We'd write x center of mass is 1 over the total mass. Notice total mass down here, times the summation of i equal 1 to n of m i x i. So when n was 2, we ended up with m1x1 plus m2x2. When n was 3, we also had m3x3 and m3 here, too. And so you can see what it would be for 4 and so on. So let's do an example using this. But we also need an equation for y center of mass. In other words, if we had a y coordinate here, how we would measure it relative to that. And for that, we would imagine gravity acts sideways, go through the same process, and we'll see what we come up with. And so, yeah, capital M is total mass. And so here's the equation we just derived. You'll see it in the book. If gravity acted sideways, we could derive the same result for the y-axis, and we'd get this. So it's y center mass. The only thing different is I have y here. And so we would apply this to a system of particles relative to some origin. So I have M1, M2, and M3, and M1 is 3 kilograms, M2 is 5, M3 is 8 kilograms. Where is their center mass? Where would they balance? So you can kind of imagine their corners of a triangle. Maybe it's a triangular sheet of material with these masses at the corners, and the material we're ignoring its mass. And so the center mass is not going to be the geometric center, right? Because M3 and M2 are more massive than M1. So it's going to move it closer to them. And so it's probably going to be lower somewhere around there. But I definitely know if I get an answer up here, I'm wrong. It has to be bounded by this triangle. So how would we do this? Well, we want to apply this equation. So I need to know the total mass. Well, that's easy, right? Just add up all the masses, 16 kilograms. And then, so it's 1 over 16 times M1 X1. And M1 is 3 kilograms, and X1 is 0.5. And then M2, X2. So M2 is 5 kilograms, and X2 is 2. 
and M3 times 4, so 8 times 4, work that out, and you get 2.72 meters for X center of mass. How about Y center of mass? Well, it's still 1 over the total mass, but then it's M1, Y1. So M1 is up here at 5, and then M2, Y2. And so M2 is at 1 in the Y coordinate, and M3, Y3. And so M3 is at 3, and you get almost the same thing, 2.75. And so if you find that, uh, there's about 2.72, 2.75 about right there. So we were pretty close just with our initial guess. If you want to practice this, well, there's a web assign problem, but you can also just make these up. So if you want to make sure you know how to do these, practice. What if I made M1 uh, 10 kilograms? What's that going to do to the center of mass? Well, it's going to move it closer to M1. So if you went through this again, you should come up with something different. And so you can play around with this. Make sure you know how to do this because it will be on the quiz. Good luck.